Good morning. Today we are starting section 13-3, Radian Measure, Day 1. And what we're going to be doing today is converting from degrees to radians and vice versa. And finding sine, cosine, and tangent. And then when we do Day 2, we'll be finding arc length and area of a sector using radians. There are two ways to measure many things. We could measure the length of a line using inches or centimeters, the temperature outside in degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, and we can measure angles in degrees or radians. So you know that this unit circle is made up of 360 degrees, and that is degree measure. However, there's something called radian measure, and where it comes from is the circumference. Remember the circumference formula is 2 pi r. But if I have a unit circle, then if r is 1, then the circumference is 2 pi. But you know it in terms of degrees. The circle is 360 degrees. So if I were to divide both sides by 2, I would get that pi is equal to 180. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So just like there is a formula to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa, there are formulas to convert from degree measure to radian or radian measure to degree. And again, that all comes down to the fact that the 360 degree circle is equal to 2 pi radians and also that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. We are going to convert each angle in degrees to radians. So basically, if something's in radians, if it doesn't have the words R-A-D or R-A-D-S written after it, then it will have a pi in it. And we know when we have something in degrees because it'll have the degree symbol. So if I want to convert from degrees to radians, basically all I'm doing is multiplying by pi over 180 because one degree is equal to pi over 180. So if I take 60 times pi over 180, and now you can either simplify from the beginning or simplify at the end, whichever you prefer, I'm going to say, hey, these zeros definitely cancel out and I'm left with 6 pi over 18, but I know those are both divisible by 6, so really it's pi over 3. Now, if I see pi over 3 and I'm talking about an angle, I automatically know it's in radians, but sometimes you may see it written as well. So 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3 radians. All right, let's try another one. If I want to convert 150 degrees to radians, I simply have to multiply by the factor of pi over 180. Again, I like to simplify first. So that would give me 15 pi over 18, but then, hey, I recognize that that is, they're both divisible by three. 15 pi divided by three is five pi, and 18 divided by three is six. So I have 5 pi over 6 or 5 6 pi radians. And again, often if you have the pi, it's not really necessary to write the radians there because the person looking at it, if they see the pi, they should know that that is in radian mode. I would like you to try problem number three using the same conversion factor. Okay. So if you multiply negative 45 times pi over 180, you get negative 45 pi over 180. And the first thing I notice is they were both divisible by 9, so that is what I did. And negative 45 pi divided by 9 is negative 5 pi. 180 divided by 9 is 20. But then I recognize that can be simplified even further. So the final answer is that negative 45 degrees is equivalent to negative pi over 4. And again, 
Not really necessary to write the word R-A-D because if I see pi, I know you're talking radians. All right, try number four and five. Pause this video while you do that. All right, so looking at number four, we multiply again by pi over 180. I simplified that to 9 pi over 18, but then recognized they were both divisible by 9. The answer is pi over 2 radians. In problem number 5, when I multiplied by pi over 180, I got 107 pi over 180. However, that wasn't anything that I could simplify, so I just left it. And just to point out here, um, 107 pi over 180 is equivalent to 107 over 180 pi because sometimes you'll see it written like that. And just so you know, it doesn't matter. They're the same. What do you think we multiply if we wanna do the opposite? If we wanna go from radians to degrees, we still use that conversion factor, but instead of multiplying by pi over 180, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal 180 over pi. And I always remember this because if I'm taking, let's say pi over six radians, and I know if I'm trying to get to degrees and I want to get rid of pi, then I, of course, would want the pi on the bottom. So that's how I remember when to multiply by pi over 180 versus 180 over pi. So what's going to happen here when I multiply pi over 6 by 180 over pi is these pi's will cancel out. And now I have 180 divided by 6, and that actually is completely divisible. That is 30 degrees. So pi over 6 radians in degrees is 30 degrees. What about 3 pi over 2 radians? If I want to convert that to degrees, 3 pi over 2 times 180 over pi. And again, the pi's are going to cancel out. And not only that, I'm seeing, hey, 2 goes into 180. How many times does 2 go into 180? 90, so all that's left to multiply is 3 times 90, which is 270 degrees. Okay, take a minute to do number 3, pause this video, and come back to it. Okay, so when you multiply negative 3 pi over 4 times 180 over pi, of course the pi's cancel out. And I could have said, hey, 4 goes into 180 here, 45 times, and then I could have just multiplied negative 3 times 45 to get my answer of negative 135. But I didn't do that. I multiplied negative 3 times 180 to get negative 540, and then that had to be divided by 4. If that did not turn out to be a whole number, then I would have had some sort of fractional or possible decimal answer, but it turns out that negative 540 divided by 4 is equal to negative 135 degrees. Take a minute to try number four and pause this video while you do so. Okay, so I took the seven pi over three, multiplied it by 180 over pi. I canceled the pi's out, and this was an easy enough one for me to simplify. Three goes into 180 60 times, so that's what I did, and therefore seven times 60 gave me my answer of 420 degrees. Problem number five is the only weird one here, and that is because there is no pi in it. But that's okay because of these words, radians. So I still know that this is in radian, and therefore I still need to multiply by 180 over pi to convert it to degrees. So 3 times 180 gives me a value of 540, but I can't really say, hey, this 3 radians is 540 pi degrees because I don't want the pi in it. So in my calculator, I'm going to take 540 and divide it by pi. So let's see what happens when we do that. 540 divided by pi. I'm seeing 171.88. So it didn't really say how to round. 171.89 or approximately 172 degrees. I guess I would have to pay attention to how I was asked to round if I had a decimal answer. 
So now you know why your new bestie has radians on it too. You need to be able to convert from back and forth. Now, you should now be able to say, hey, I know how to take a 30 degree angle and turn it into pi over six. I can take this 210 degree angle and convert it to seven pi over six because you now have that mini formula to do so. But I would like you to take a look at your new bestie and tell me what do you notice about the radian measures that have a 45 degree reference angle? Let's take a look at those. So that would be our pi over fours. That would be our three pi over four. That would be our five pi over four. That would be our seven pi over four. What do you notice? Well, hopefully you notice they all have fours in the de denominator. A four in the denominator. So anytime I see an angle that is in, has a four in the denominator, I know it's some form of a 45 degree angle, which is pretty cool because I know the ordered pair that goes along with the 45 degree angle. So I would just have to figure out which quadrant it's in. Now, what do you notice about all of the radian measures for the 30 degree reference angle? Now, remember that would be this one here, 30 degrees, also at 150 because 180 minus 150. And then of course here, if I take 180 plus 30, and then here, if I take 360 minus that 30, so we've got pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. So hopefully you're realizing, hey, they all have a six in the denominator and that'll always be the case. So even if I got some crazy number like 25 pi over 6 or something like that, I know what it's referring to. It's referring to a 30 degree angle and this ordered pair, radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half, the only thing that would change would be the sign, whether it's positive or negative, of the x and y coordinates. All right, last one. What do you notice about those angles that have a 60 degree reference angle? And if you said they all have a three in the denominator, you are absolutely correct. So I always recognize if I have it in radian measure and there's a three in the denominator, it's referring to the 60 degree angle. I just need to know which quadrant it's in so I can determine the sign positive or negative I give my ordered pairs. One thing that either can throw you off or help you remember is the 30 degree angles have a six in the denominator, the 60 degree angles have a three in the denominator. You, you would almost think it would be the other way around, but it's not. Okay, so here's where I'm going with all this. The measure theta of an angle in standard position is given. Find the exact values of sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta for each angle measure. Now, five pi over six, you have a couple of options here. If you prefer degrees, you can always convert it to degrees. So that's option number one. Hey, I don't like dealing with radians. So what I'm gonna do is convert this to degrees. That six goes into the 180, 30 times, the pi's cancel out, and five times 130 is 150. And now I'm gonna go look to my bestie. Oh, wait a minute. Look at that. 150 5 pi over 6. So technically, I could have just went to the 5 pi over 6. The ordered pair that I need is negative radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And now I just have to remember, okay, this is a unit circle. Which one is the cosine? Which one is the sine? Think alphabetical. The cosine comes first then the sine. So to answer the question here, I've got the sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. I've got the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative radical 3 over 2. And I know that the tan is 
I'm going to put that over here, y over x, or sometimes we just say sine over cosine. So in this case, I'm putting 1 half over negative radical 3 over 2. Now we know what happens here. Those 2's cancel out. We're left with 1 over negative radical 3. However, we don't keep that radical 3. In the denominator, whether you multiply by positive or negative doesn't really matter because ultimately it's going to be negative. And 1 times radical 3 is radical 3. And radical 3 times radical 3 is simply the whole number 3. So the sine of 5, five pi over 6 is 1 half. The cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative radical 3 over 2. And the tan of 5 pi over 6 is negative radical 3 over 3. Okay, because problem number two is negative, you may find it a little tricky. So you may or may not approach it like, hey, I'm going to first convert it to degrees just because I feel more comfortable with degrees. The pi's cancel out. 3 goes into 180, 60 times. And I'm left with negative 120 degrees. But you still have to figure out where that is. So think about it like this. If I go negative 120, that's negative 120, what's my reference angle? That's right, it's a 60 degree angle. Or, honestly, think about it this way. On your bestie, where's negative 2 pi over 3? Because it's not here. However, I know that I have, I'm in this quadrant with it. And I know I had a 3 in the denominator for my negative 2 pi over 3. And I know from what we just did that it is, in fact, a 60 degree reference angle. So this 4 pi over 3 is equivalent to negative 2 pi over 3. Maybe you don't like that explanation. Maybe you want a different explanation. Well, what if you were to add negative 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi to get another angle, a coterminal angle, that's equivalent to negative 2 pi over 3. Well, that's kind of annoying because you would have to convert that so it had a denominator of 3. So instead of 2 pi, how about we say 6 pi over 3? So what's negative 2 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3? Ah, look at that. It's 4 pi over 3. Any way you look at this problem, I hope that you realize that this is the ordered pair that we need to use. So I am going to use negative 1 half and negative radical 3 over 2 as my ordered pair. Negative 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2. And once I have that, then the rest is history. The sine of negative 2 pi over 3 equals, remember the sine is the y coordinate, so that is negative radical 3 over 2. The cosine of negative 2 pi over 3 is that x-coordinate, so that is negative 1 half. Tan, I'm going to put the y over, so the tan of negative 2 pi over 3, I'm going to put the sine over the cosine or the y over the x, negative radical 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. Would you look at that? A negative divided by a negative is positive, and these two cancel out. So really what we're left is radical 3 over radical 1, which is simply positive radical 3. So the tan of negative 2 pi over 3 is positive radical 3. Okay, so 3 pi over 2. Again, you may just go straight to your uh, new bestie, or you could say, eh, I want to multiply that by 180 over pi because I'm just more comfortable with degrees. These pi's cancel out. 2 goes into 180 90 times. And hey, 3 times 90 is 270 degrees. Well, where's that? Let's see. That's 90, 180, 270. And remember, on the unit circle, that is the point 0, negative 1. So that is my cosine. That is my sign, okay? That's, that's how I do it. I mean, I know where 3 pi over 2 is, so I don't really convert it to 270. But honestly, 
you could locate 3 pi over 2 on your chart and realize that the point is 0, negative 1 that way. Again, as long as you get there, I don't really care how you get there. Okay, so now let's answer this. Let's say what the sine of 3 pi over 2 is. Okay, remember the sine is the y-coordinate, so it's negative 1. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is the x-coordinate, and therefore it's 0. And then the tan of 3 pi over 2, well, remember, we put the y over the x, but what happens when I take negative 1 and try to divide it by 0? It doesn't work. So therefore, the tan of 3 pi over 2, we write as undefined. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and the tan of 3 pi over 2 is undefined. All right, why don't you take a minute to try number 4 completely on your own, pause the video, and then come back to see if you did it correctly. Okay, so you had a couple of options here. You could convert it to degrees, and then you get negative 315 degrees. If you go negative 315 degrees, then the reference angle or ordered pair you need corresponds to the 45. Or you could have gone the route to find a coterminal angle, negative 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, but again, I want something with a denominator of 4, so I used 8 pi over 4 gives me a positive pi over 4, which is a 45 degree coterminal angle, which also leads me here. That is the ordered pair radical 2 over 2, comma radical 2 over 2. Another way, again, that I look at it is, remember, I said if there's a 4 in the denominator, it definitely has a 45 degree angle ordered pair. You just have to decide what quadrant it's in. And I know that if positive 7 pi over 4 is here, then it would make sense that negative 7 pi over 4 is right here. Again, as long as you can come up with radical 2 over 2 comma radical 2 over 2 as your ordered pair for this problem, you're good. So therefore, the sine of negative 7 pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. The cosine of negative 7 pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. And the tan of negative 7 pi over 4, well, when I put radical 2 over 2 over radical 2 over 2, I simply get 1. Okay, so the assignment for this lesson is from your textbook, page 848. I've provided you a copy of that page if you don't have your textbook. Problems 7, 9, 11, 12, 14, 16, and then 22 through 25 all. And in 22 through 25 all, they just ask you to find the sine and cosine. I would like you to find the tangent too. This assignment is not due today. However, it's due no later than 11.59 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, May 14th. Have a great day.